Hello, welcome to Microsoft Azure training series powered by ATCSL. My name is Neeraj. I am an enterprise architect, Microsoft certified Azure administrator associate, and I will be your instructor for this course. So what are we going to learn today? Today, we will try to understand event and message handling in Azure. We will look into the Azure service bus, event grids, event hubs, we will also see a short demo on event handling and monitoring event. This is an extension of AZ-101 certification and the administrators also should have the understanding on how the events are managed in Azure. There are many different services that help us work with the event messages. But today we are going to discuss on three of the major services, which are Azure message service bus, event grid and event hub. So Microsoft has designed each one of them to be used for specific scenarios. We will try to understand the differences amongst each one of these services and also understand which services to opt for your need. At times, they can be clubbed together to perform critical business operations. But even before we dig deep, into each one of the Azure message services independently, let us first try and understand some critical terms which will be helpful for us going forward in understanding these services. We will start with the dead lettering. What exactly is dead lettering? Azure service bus queues and topic subscription provide a subqueue, and these subqueues are called dead letter queues. We do not need to create them explicitly and cannot be deleted or otherwise managed independent of the main entity. What is the purpose? The purpose of the dead letter queue is to hold on to those messages which cannot be delivered to any receiver or messages which cannot be processed. These kind of messages can then be removed from the dead lettering queue and inspected separately. Next is at least once delivery. Now, in an event that the application crashes after the processing of the message, but before the complete async request is issued, that the message has been processed, so what happens is, it is not considered that the message has been processed. So the message is re-delivered to the application as soon as it is up and running again, when the application restarts. This process is often called at least once processing. That is to ensure that the message has been processed at least one time. The third one is the temporal buffers. Event hubs are temporal in nature and contrary to the traditional message path systems, events on an event hub are neither acknowledged nor removed by the subscription clients. Instead, these events remain intact until a predetermined time. Usually the time period is around 24 hours. Event hubs are facilitator of big data. In that their primary purpose is to move large volume of data from one point to the other. For example, logging and auditing system that consists of widely distributed and diverse, diverse data structures that need to be centralized and parsed. But even before we dig deep into each one of the Azure message services independently, let us first try and understand some critical terms which will be helpful for us going forward in understanding these services. We will start with the dead lettering. What exactly is dead lettering? Azure service bus queues and topic subscription provide a subqueue, and these subqueues are called dead letter queues. We do not need to create them explicitly and cannot be deleted or otherwise managed independent of the main entity. What is the purpose? The purpose of the dead letter queue is to hold on to those messages which cannot be delivered to any receiver or messages which cannot be processed. These kind of messages can then be removed from the dead lettering queue and inspected separately. We are going to start with the Azure Service Bus. So Service Bus is a brokered messaging system 
it stores the messages in the broker, for example, say a queue, and waits until the consuming party is ready to receive the messages. It has the following characteristics. It is reliably reliable asynchronous message delivery system, and this one requires polling. It has advanced messaging features like FIFO, batch or sessions, like batching and sessions, transactions, dead lettering, temporal control, routing and filtering, and duplicate detection. It has at least once delivery feature. So an Azure Service Bus namespace is a host of queues for holding jobs of critical business values. It allows for the creation of routes for messages that need to travel between applications and application modules. Going next, let us, let us understand what even grids are. Even grid are event driven and enables reactive programming. It is an intelligent event routing service that enables you to react to the notifications from the apps and services. It internally uses a publish subscribe model where the publishers emit the events. But these publishers, mind you, these publishers have no expectations about which events are handled. Subscribers are the one to describe, decide which events they want to handle. So event grid is deeply integrated with Azure services and can be integrated with third party services as well. What it does is it simplifies even consumption and lowers cost by eliminating the need for constant polling. Event grid efficiently and reliably routes the event from Azure and non-Azure uh, resources. It distributes the event to the registered subscriber endpoints. And the event messages has the information that is required to react to the changes in the services and applications. So what I said earlier, like the publishers, they will publish the events, but they have no expectations. And the subscriber are the, are the ones to decide what, what events they are going to react to. And they only get the information for the reaction. They don't get the actual object. So for example, if a file is uploaded to the blob storage, an event has occurred. Now for that event, the event grid will receive the notification that the event has occurred. What has happened? but it will never ever get the actual object, which is a file. Even grid is not a data pipeline and doesn't deliver the actual object that was updated. Even grid supports dead lettering for events that are delivered to an endpoint. So it has the following characteristics. It is dynamically scalable. It is low cost. Service, uh, it, uh, goes for the service serverless computing. I'm sorry and at least once delivery So these are the features of event grid For the event grids previously we had support for blob storage resource groups Azure subscriptions event hubs and other custom topics But Microsoft Azure team has been working hard to add additional event publishers and event handlers so as to make it more easy for the reactive handling of the events we now have additional event sources added by Microsoft, which can be published to the topics, which are the endpoint URLs. And similarly, we have the additional event handlers to handle those events from the sources. On the picture on the left hand side, we see that we have additional event sources along with the ones that we previously had, like the media services and the IoT hubs which publish to the endpoint URLs, which are called the topics. And then the event handlers subscribe to these events through the event grid. And these event handlers then perform their own custom actions for the expected business results. And that is how the event grids work. We will now see what event hubs are. As I previously told, event grids are not big data pipeline, but event hubs are. So Azure event hubs are big data pipeline. It facilitates the capture, retention, and relay of telemetry and event data 
even stream data. There can be multiple concurrent sources. They allow the telemetry and event data to be made available to a variety of stream processing infrastructure and analytic services. It is available either as a data streams or bundled event batches. These event hubs provide single solution that enables rapid data retrieval for real-time processing as well as repeated relay of stored raw data. It also has the following characteristics. It, is, it has low latency. It is capable of receiving and processing millions of events per second and at least once delivery. So in certain scenarios, we can use the services together. We can combine them. We can combine the event grid and event hubs and so on and so forth to use uh, to achieve certain critical business objectives. So you can use the event grid to respond to the events in other services. For example, if you see the image below, event grid with event hubs uh, is being used here to migrate data to the data warehouse. The event hubs will uh, will have multiple events. They will capture it, send it to the event grid, and they will also capture the file, which goes to the storage. As I previously told you, that the event grid will never work directly with the object. If it, it will only work with the events. And then, those based on those events, uh, we see the Azure Function app. It will perform um, some time or some type of a function. It can retrieve or it can send the file directly to the storage or from the storage and then send the processed data to the data warehouse. And that is how one or more of those events and messaging systems can be combined, com can be combined together for critical business objectives. Here, we'll try to understand each of these messaging services their purposes, what are the types, and when to use what. So first of all, we will see event grids. They, as already mentioned, uh, the purpose of uh, their uh, of the event grids is for the reactive programming. So whenever an event is raised by the publisher and sent to the endpoint, they will react to that. They will subscribe, and then an event handling will be done. They are of a type event distribution and when you want to react to the status changes, when you want to handle those status changes and want to uh, perform an action, that is where you would be using event grid. For the event hubs, those are the big data pipeline where event streaming is happening. So they are of a type even even streaming series of data from multiple sources and being distributed to the multiple sources for handling. And you use it for the telemetry and distributed data streaming. What about the service bus? Now, service bus is a high value enterprise messaging system. It is a type of message and order processing and financial transaction is where you will use uh, the service bus. One of the most common examples is the e-commerce website where there will be orders uh, from the uh, orders from people like us who will be going to the online e-commerce site, will purchase things and then there will be order processing and we'll have the payment gateways integrated where the financial transactions will take place. And in the same place, we have the event hubs and the event grids as well. So they can be used independently as well as in conjunction with, with each other. Let us now dive into a demo and see how these events work, how the events are published, and how these events are handled using the event grids. We will thereafter see how to monitor those events in terms of successes and in terms of failures as well. We will now log into our portal.azure.com and see how we can work with the Azure event grids. So what we will see first is a new dashboard. The first thing that we are going to do is to create a resource group. As of now, 
we see that there are no resource groups here. So we'll click on add. We'll find out the resource group. And then create a new resource group, which will show our subscription. If we have more than one subscription, it will show us in the drop down there. We will give it a name, ACTSL underscore RG. And the location, as you see, is East US 2. We'll go to the resource and then we will add a storage account. We will give the storage account a name, which is ACTSL storage. Choose a location and as use East US 2. And for the replication purposes, we are going to choose locally redundant. And after review, we are going to create this resource. I'll pause the video and come back when it is done. We are back and we see that ACTSL sample storage has been created as a resource. We go to the resource and we see that we have these services for blobs, files, queues and tables. We will go to the blob and we will create an additional container. This container will simply contain all the files that we will be uploading. So I'm naming this as a BHD container. So now we see that the BHD container has been created. As a second step, we are going to utilize the SendGrid email delivery system, which is integrated with Azure. We will give it, give it a name. Send grid mail sample. Yes, it is. And then we put on the password. Confirm the password. The subscription I have is pay as you go. We'll use the existing resource group. And for the pricing tier, we have three here as silver, bronze, and free. For now, our purposes, uh, for our purposes, we are going to choose free subscription. and then click on the select. Once done, we are now going to fill in the contact information. So it's a, it's a usual, usual information as first name, last name and the email address so that you get, you confirm with that email address for the SendGrid account that you have created. The company name and the website are optional, but here I am putting it as ACDSL and then I'll click, click OK. We now need to click on the review legal terms. Click on create and then click on create finally. So we now see that the SendGrid email is getting deployed. It's quick. So we'll go to that resource. And I see that the resource has been created. We see the configuration and the properties. So for the properties, we see that the status is running and the provider is 10 grid. And the location is East US 2. The pricing plan is free. And then we have the subscription ID. We'll go to the configuration. We will see the username. And we will also see the pass, uh, SMTP server. What we can do is we can note it down somewhere so that it helps us in while we write the code. So we will put in the username, we'll put in the SMTP server, and then we'll go to manage. Clicking on the manage, we'll open another page for app.sendgrid.com and see here it will send me for the email confirmation. I'll click on in a separate screen. I'll click on the confirmation and come back here. Now that I have confirmed, it says, hello Neeraj, here's your recent email activity. 
We'll go down, we'll click on the settings, we'll click on the API keys and get started with the API keys, create API key and I'll just give it a name. Send grid API key, full access and create and view. Now that the API key has been created, we will copy that. So clicking on it will automatically copy it. We'll paste it in the notepad for the reference purposes and we'll click on done. We'll come back to the Azure portal and then go and create the app services. Here, we see that there is none. We'll click on the function app. We'll create a new app. Click on the function app. Click on the create button. Give it a name for the app services that we have. We'll put it as, okay, this is taken. We'll put it as ACTSL function and that works. <clears throat> we'll click on the resource group. We'll choose the location as East US 2. I need the runtime stack as .NET. I'll use the storage account, which is the existing one, ACTSL sample storage. Application st insights, as you see, is disabled here. I'll click on enable. But you see here, I don't have East US 2 because some of the features are not available at some places. So I'll click on East US and then click apply. Click on create. The validation is successful, but it's still running. We'll go to the resource. And we see that the ACTSL function has been created. We will now click on the application settings, go below and click on add new settings and we will put in the send grid API key that we created there. We'll create a new app setting name as this one, put the value of the key that was generated there. And then save all these settings. So now we have the API key for the send grid. The next step is to work with the functions. The one that would handle the event that was raised by the storage account when a new file will be uploaded. I'll use more templates and I'll go down. Click on the event grid trigger. Initially, it will say that the extensions are not installed. You need to install it. So it will take some time. So I'll pause the video and return back when it is done, once it is done. So extension installation has succeeded. It generally takes two minutes approximately. We'll click on continue and we'll leave the name as is even grid trigger one, the function name, and we'll click, click on create. So we now see that we have the even grid trigger one and a simple, small few lines of code auto generated for us. If we go and see the files, we have function.json and run.csx.
we'll close it we'll go to integrate but before that there is an add azure extension subscription so now we are trying from this function we are trying to create a subscription which will subscribe to the events that are raised by the storage account and handled uh, by going to the topics what are those topics if you see here pick a topic resource for which the events should be generated so the events are getting generated for the storage account we'll choose a subscription we will choose a resource group and then we will choose the storage name for which the events will be raised and we'll subscribe to all events if we uncheck that we'll see that we have two different options there the blob created and the blob deleted but then we are going to subscribe to all the events and we see that the, there we have the webhook which contains the url to be worked upon once that is completed we will now go to integrate And we will see that the event grid subscription URL appears there with the event grid uh, event trigger parameter name as event grid event. Okay. Now we'll click on a new output because we need to send an email whenever a new file is uploaded. So we'll choose send grid and we will click select. Here we see this is SendGrid output needs to be installed. So it is installing the uh, template. Once done, we will be able to choose the SendGrid API app setting, which we created initially after creating the um, app services. We'll put in the from address. We'll click on the, we'll uh, type in the message text. We'll put the to address. And we'll also put the message subject. That the item has been uploaded. So once that is done, We'll go back to the event grid trigger one, which is our function. So I've already clicked on the uh, create button and then we are here. We will add a few lines of code. So we include the namespace. We'll include it as hash R. What hash R does is to register, send, to register any namespace. So here the namespace is send grid because that is what we are using. So we will register it by using hash r send it. And then we will include that in the code below with using SendGrid, using SendGrid helpers, and using SendGrid helpers mail. Once that is done, we'll go to the function. We will add the output as is intended. And then as a return, we, we will need to populate the message, which is the new send grid message. So once that is done, we click on save. And then we can test this. We will click on run, which will compile and then execute. So if you see here, it is executed and succeeded. We will now go and see if I received an email. So here it is. I received it from Aquila Conserve. If you see, the from address is sendgrid.me. 
with their address mail by sendgrid.net signed by sendgrid.me and it sends to neerajks77 at gmail.com and that shows how the events are handled using the function app and how the event grid works we'll now look at how monitoring works we'll click on the monitor and we will see that this was a success if we click on it we will we can see additional information the previous ones are all failures i was trying my code and i was looking at uh, how it works and why it is not working I'll, i was doing something but then we have a success here and we have the details of executing function uh, event grid trigger and what it is uh, doing and it is using the file url as tested blob.core.windows.net because we were running and debugging it and what we can do is we can run an application insights we will click on the run in application insights and then it will load your application details so if you see here on this page which is the analytics.applicationinsights.io it will give you the details of all the analysis uh, and those analysis can be ful further filtered and can be looked into it so this is just a small part of the monitoring for the azure specifically for the events event grid and the function apps that we created and that is how the event grid functions and how how that is how the functions will be using the event grid to to process the information that it gets in summary what have we learned today we learned about azure messaging services and how azure service bus event grids and event hubs play their role in eventing and messaging we also saw how in certain scenarios one or more services can be combined to achieve critical business operations hope the session was helpful to you thank you for joining in keep assuring